What's up, everyone? Kyle here. I'm really excited to be starting a subscription for this podcast. Now, that doesn't mean that you need a subscription to listen to this podcast, but the benefits of getting a subscription are no ads like this one and a shout out on each episode, as well as knowing that your money is going towards doing something good. This money is not meant to go to me. Some of it is meant to help me maintain this podcast and keep getting guests on, but most of it uh, is meant to go towards providing school supplies towards kids in need. It's my commitment to put three dollars of every uh, of every monthly subscription towards uh, providing school supplies to kids in need and helping them achieve their goals and dreams as well. Um, this is a passion of mine. This is something that I really um, have been pursuing. This is why I have started all this, uh, the podcasting, the books, everything like that, was to give opportunities to other people. So I'm very excited to be able to do this now. Uh, the subscription is $4.99 a month, so nothing crazy. Less, uh, you know, one cup of coffee a month, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's very exciting, and it's going towards something that I am really passionate about and believe in. And um, I hope you uh, enjoy the benefits of being a premium subscriber. There will also be discounts and, and things along the way. Um, that I'll make available to people as time moves on and as this continues to grow. The link to subscribe is in the description below, so check that out. There's also a link to donate uh, towards the mission of providing school supplies to those in need, so you can do that as well. Uh, Thanks again, and enjoy the episode. Welcome, everyone. This is Our Travel Experiences. I'm your host, Kyle Rasmussen. And today I have with me Jamie of the Randy and Jamie uh, duo here from Roman Your Home on Instagram. Jamie, how are you today? I'm doing great, Kyle. Thanks so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, yeah. Super excited to uh, to hear about some of your travel experiences. Um, Like I was telling you just before we hopped on here, uh, I don't think I've talked with anyone who's, you know, really been focused on the RV life necessarily. So this is going to be fun and new for me to to hear about as well. Oh, awesome. We absolutely love it. So I'm so excited to tell you all about it. Yeah, awesome. So um, how did you guys kind of get into this RV life? Well, this is so funny. So my husband and I at the time, uh, we're still um, physical therapist assistants. And at the time we were, you know, just just like every a uh, working couple just working for the weekends and we don't have any children and we were just, you know, living for the weekends. But then it, reality was the weekends were, you know, mowing the lawn and going to the grocery store and paying the bills and cleaning, you know, laundry and all that stuff. And we were just not making any memories and time was just really passing us by. And, and honestly, like working, you know, with uh, the geriatric population we were seeing in our, in our jobs, you know, life is short. And Mm -hmm. what were we doing, you know, and we had a four bedroom home and, you know, all this stuff and for what, you know, and and just to make no memories. And so we decided um, to start travel therapy. And so what travel therapy is, is like traveling nursing. Have you ever heard of that? It's like Mm -hmm. typically a 13 week contract and, you know, you work with a recruiter and they send you to different parts of the country. And so we were always, you know, really you know, thinking about that, but you get comfortable at your job. And, and so we said, you know what, we're never, this is never going to be easy. Let's just go ahead and do it. So we have a yellow lab that is just like our child and um, he's a big part of our life. And so we didn't want to, you know, pack up our cars and pack him up and go live in, you know, some furnished condo for 13 weeks and unpack. And he's always uncomfortable and all that. And so we decided to look at RVs and funny story. We've never been in an RV until we bought one. Like, so we, we were, we didn't grow up campers and, you know, going to, you know, we didn't have friends with RVs. We knew nothing about an RV and we decided um, to just go look at, you know, an RV show. And we were like, we could totally do this. We (laughs) could, you know, we could make this work. So we sold our four bedroom home. 95% of everything we own and quit our full-time jobs, making very good money to travel the country to make memories. And we were like, we're either going to find out that we made the biggest mistake of our lives, (laughs) or we're going to learn 
that we made the best decision of our lives. And thankfully, <laughs> we learned that we made the best decision of our lives. And we cannot imagine stopping. Wow, that's that's incredible. What a what a leap of faith there. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> thought we were crazy, especially our family and friends. They're like, "What are you guys doing?" And we kind of <laughs> joked about it like we had a midlife crisis, but at least we had it together. <laughs> and we were totally everything we were on the same page with. And we never, you know, cuz I we talked to so many couples that, you know, one one of them really wants to do the RV life and the other one doesn't and we have always been on the same page and that's such a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine, you know, especially if you're going to, you know, be in those close, uh, close quarters <laughs> there, uh, it's probably good to be on the same page with each other. Absolutely. We get along <laughs> so great. We just celebrated 31 years of marriage and um, wow. yeah. And we just, every year gets better. It seems we really have a great relationship and we're definitely um, super thankful for that. Yeah, that's amazing. So what was that that discussion like? I mean, did you guys make that decision pretty quickly after checking out those RVs or did it take a little bit of time to say, you know, we're going to sell everything here and, and go in? <laughs> well, you know, I am a planner. I am a huge planner. I'm a list maker. I'm a researcher. My husband's more uh, go with the flow. Let's do it. You know, uh, let's go ahead and just do it. Um, but honestly, this was way quicker than than even you know I had had planned. Um, so we started, you know, just walking into the RVs and said, you know, we could totally make this work. And oh my gosh, this is these are way nicer than we ever imagined. Um, I grew up with parents who. Um, you know, weren't campers, same thing with my husband, but my parents were like, why in the world would anybody RV when they could stay in a hotel? And I'm like, I know that's crazy. You know, <laughs> and I had honestly thought people who RV'd were, you know, just, just crazy really. And mm -hmm. honestly, um, when we started out, that was one of the first things too, that we learned is they're not crazy. They're, they have like such a great life. But so when we decided to go ahead and start thinking about this, we didn't tell anybody because we knew everybody was going to lose their minds. And we just started planning, okay, like what kind of truck do we need to tow the RV? And that's a big thing. Like people don't even realize all of the research that needs to go into it. So my husband had a truck, but not a big enough truck to tow the RV. So we needed to learn like towing capacity and payload and, you know, all that stuff that we had no idea about. And um, so we did that research and found the kind of truck that we needed for the RV. And a lot of people wanted to, you know, were asking us afterwards, like, didn't you rent an RV to find out if you liked it? Or, you know, didn't you get a small one to, you know, to find out? if it was something you wanted and no, we went right for the 40 foot fifth wheel <laughs> wow. and, um, with a big 3,500 dually truck that was basically like driving a semi down the road. Jeez. And, uh, so, and my husband only towed, I think like a, maybe a 15 foot trailer, like a, like a um, utility trailer before this. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he, um, he went with a friend who was a semi driver and really learned how, cause you do not need a, a license to drive a, a certain license, you know, like a commercial license mm -hmm. to drive a big RV, which we thought you did. <laughs> and when it's a personal vehicle, I know it's kind of scary when you see all these big vehicles and sometimes, <laughs> you know, the people are very, you know, elderly and you're like, Oh wow, they don't even have a special license. But um, when it's personal, you don't need, at least in our state, I don't know, maybe some states are, but um, where we were in, in Florida, you didn't need one. So, um, but he did a lot of like, you know, driving highways, back roads, backing in like different, you know, different things uh, before we actually hit the road. And he did that with a friend that was trained. So he felt pretty comfortable. And I actually, for the longest time, I followed because we had, you know, we we're going to get two different jobs. I had a SUV. And I actually towed my husband's uh, motorcycle. So we had really like three vehicles with us. And because the big dually truck is hard to take everywhere. So he would take yeah. the motorcycle to work. I would take the um, SUV to work. And so, but yeah, so we um, decided to put our house up for sale. And we thought it would take, you know, several months. And, you know, we were kind of like doing some things about, you know, trying to liquidate our assets and stuff. And um, our house sold with it. Uh, overnight by with the cash buyer. <laughs> so, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so we were, and it wasn't the greatest market at that time. This was back in 2017. 
And so we're like, well, I guess we're doing this quicker than we had planned. So we, um, we moved into the RV pretty quickly a few weeks later. And then um, we kind of took about six months staying local in an RV park before we actually took a contract. And we were in Daytona Beach, Florida. And our first contract was San Francisco, California. So talking about going from the East Coast (laughs) to the West Coast. And we're originally from Ohio. So we have only our whole entire lives up until that point, we've only been between Ohio and Florida. Never been anywhere west of like Indiana. Oh, wow. So we went up um, to Ohio to say goodbye to our family, like just, you know, to see them real quick. And then we, we went I-80 West all the way in and it was just a dream. I mean, it, we had walkie talkies where we would communicate because a lot of times like we would lose cell service mm-hmm. and we, we just, every five minutes we're like, are you seeing these views? Like this was so <laughs> exciting. It was so, ex- we were every day like, can you believe we're doing this? Can you believe we're doing this? This is so awesome. And uh, yeah, we just, that's, we kind of still have that when we travel anywhere new. We're like, can you believe we get to see this? This is so exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's amazing. There's, there's so many, I, I feel like we're really oh, yes. amazing sites out there. And, and I think driving across the country is, is a great way to see it. Absolutely. I highly recommend it. Even if somebody doesn't have an RV, just to take a drive. There's so much beauty that this country has that we just can't believe it. And there's so much more on our list that we have to see. Mm-hmm. What's, uh, what's been some recent travels that you've, uh, you've been on? So last year we did 10 weeks in Colorado. And up until then, we just were in um, like Rocky Mountain National Park was like number one on our bucket list for the longest time. And we only did about maybe a half a day there back in, I think it was 2018. And um, so we decided to head to Colorado and we had, we wanted to do all four national parks in Colorado and a few other places. And so we stayed 10 weeks and it was the best 10 weeks of our lives. We just had a blast. Um, I were really kind of anxious and also a little bit um, worried if we're ever going to see anything as beautiful as we just saw. And, and we always crack up when we say that because the next thing is like our next favorite thing, you know, so yeah, everything yeah. just keeps getting more beautiful. But every time we see something beautiful, like, oh, what if this is the best thing we've ever seen and only gets disappointing <laughs> from here? You know? <laughs> and your travels, I'm sure you've thought the same thing, like, oh, oh yeah. this might be it, you know. But so we um, our new favorite place on Earth, which is so funny because um, it was actually number one in our our, our new number one on our bucket list was um, t- to see Telluride, Colorado. Okay. And I don't even know where that came from. Like, I don't even know. I think I just saw somebody post about it on Instagram and it just looked like a Hallmark movie. It was like this mountain <laughs> town and it was just we just started seeing it everywhere and we went and it was like, oh my gosh, this is better than a thousand times better than the pictures. And we just fell in love with it. And so there was a lot of Colorado that like the million dollar highway was another amazing place that just the drive and the beauty all around. It was just like, it just kept getting better and better the time we stayed there. And it was awesome. It was really, really, really great. Yeah. Well, I'm curious, what's the million dollar highway? So it is a stretch of, I can't remember how many miles, but it goes from like Ure to Silverton and, um, and it's just this drive that's really like a lot of people won't even take it because it's, you know, uh, no guardrails. There's the, the, you know, the, the mountain, the mountains, like, yeah, there's a lot of deaths, um, especially in the winter. Like they have a whole like memorial for all of the, the snowplow drivers that have passed away. Um, yeah. I mean, so that's like, oh my gosh, why would we ever, but it was in the summer. We would never drive it in the winter and we didn't tow anything while we were on the road we just took our jeep and and um and it was just spectacular we do like now we have a different rv we have a small rv and a jeep and so we like to do more um off-roading and and different jeep trails so we're more used to 
um, the shelf roads on the side of the mountain. And, and a lot of people look at our, you know, we'll look at our videos and our pictures and say, there is no way. And we used to be kind of, well, my husband's always a daredevil, but I used to be like almost in tears, you know, and now I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So I don't know what happened, but um, I guess you get comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> and just like with travel therapy, same thing. We started getting comfortable being uncomfortable in new jobs all the time and stuff. But um it's just, we are all about searching for the best views. And we know when you get off road and off the beaten path, it's like, wow, we're so fortunate to be able to see some of these views that most people can't see. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's amazing. I, I I love what you guys are doing. It, it just sounds like such a fun uh, adventure that you're on. And, and every, it, it, like every day is a new adventure for you guys. That is honestly how it feels. It really does. And it's like, you know, every new place is, is like a chapter, you know, un, unread. And we're like, flip the page and we're so excited to dive in. And, and we just, you know, we're all about like trying to find, you know, what the beauty everywhere. And it doesn't matter, like maybe sometimes they're, you know, people are just so used to seeing what's in front of them that mm -hmm. it's so hard. And we, and we realized that in our, in our travels too, that was probably the thing that was most surprising in our travels is there was so much beauty around us when we left that we never saw because we were busy and we were just so used to it. And then when we went to like San Francisco and, and I'm, I had a 13 week contract right in the city. So I'm doing home health in the city, driving back and forth from San Jose, which was like a two hour commute and every day and, you know, seeing my patients in the city and seeing all this, you know, like the Golden Gate Bridge and all the stuff that I've seen on TV that I, I can't believe we're seeing it. And, you know, we're so excited about all this like newfound beauty that the world, you know, that our, our country has to offer. And then when we go back to actually, we went back to Ohio, our hometown, and I'm out with my girlfriends having lunch and I'm looking at the courthouse in our hometown that I passed a million times. And I'm like taking out my camera and taking pictures I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is gorgeous. Like there's so much beauty everywhere. It really like opened our eyes. And, and now we're on a mission to find the beauty wherever we go, no matter, you know, if you think there isn't one, we're, we're, we're on a, you know, we challenge, you know, challenge ourselves to find it. And, and there's always, always something to be thankful for and, and beauty to, to be found wherever you go. And so even if we don't see the 14,000 um, feet peaks, you know, we're, we're still, um, we're still excited to be, you know, wherever we are right now, we're in Daytona beach, Florida. And, and we lived here for, you know, 15 years before we started traveling and uh, you get just used to seeing the ocean. And we realize some people have never seen it and that's on their bucket list and we don't yeah. want to take it for granted. Yeah. It, it's amazing. Once you, I, I feel like when you go and you travel and you see all these amazing things and then you come home, you have that new appreciation for, you know, where, where you've lived. Uh, totally. And kind of missed, uh, had you have not left. Exactly. I really do think we kind of take it for granted. And when we came back the first time, we uncovered like three different parks that we drove by for 15 years when we lived here because um, we lived uh, in Port Orange, which is just south of Daytona Beach. And um, three different parks that were gorgeous that we never, ever pulled into. And it was like, what were we thinking? Well, how do we get so busy that we don't even look around? And uh, one time we were at the Grand Canyon and we were at a restaurant right outside the Grand Canyon. And, and we were just so excited to see the Grand Canyon. We were like, oh, this is another bucket list. And and we had we were in a restaurant and our server who was waiting on us, we one of the first things I said to her was like, oh, my gosh, how lucky you are to live at the, you know, right outside the Grand Canyon. And she like looked at me and said, oh, I haven't been there for years. And it was like, oh, oh, wow. oh my gosh, like I, I can't imagine. I thought like you would go every weekend, you know, and and then we realized, wow, it's no different from us living in, you know, Daytona Beach for 15 years and hardly ever seeing the ocean. It was just, you know, 15 mm -hmm. minutes down the road and sometimes we wouldn't go for months. It's just crazy. You just take things for granted. But yes, traveling has really made us appreciate our surroundings. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's uh, that's a good, a really good example of just how you can kind of get used to, you know, what you're, where you live and what you see every day. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, like going through Colorado, um, you know, things that come to my mind is the high elevation. Yes. And is that something that is a, 
you know, hard to navigate with an RV? Yes. And so um, funny that you mentioned it. So we really, during COVID, we were actually back. um, We had just finished a contract in Fresno, um, uh, California for six months. And we had come back to Daytona Beach area for, we were hoping three months from January to March. (laughs) And we all know what happened in March of 2020. So we could not, like all the travel contracts were on hold. And so we were stationary for about a year and a half and that killed us, (laughs) but we were thankful to be back. Like we're, we had some family and friends and not somewhere where we didn't know anybody, but it was still really hard for us because we didn't know what to do. So we had this like, and it was so funny, like, like I said before, how we're always on the same page, my husband and I, we had the same exact, um, we still don't know who thought of it first. We both take credit for it, but we're not sure who's had the idea, but one of us had the idea of let's do something crazy and let's sell our big 40 foot fifth wheel and buy, you know, cause we really, the Jeep gladiator was coming out. We really wanted the gladiator, but you can't like, you can't tow anything, you know, big with it. And, and you can't, I didn't want to drive that separate. And so we were, um, we had the idea of buying the Jeep gladiator to do some off-roading and trying to find the biggest small RV that the Jeep Gladiator can safely tow. So we ended up selling our big 3,500 dually, getting the Jeep Gladiator and selling our 40 foot fifth wheel and getting, um, a 20 foot travel trailer. <laughs> so we wow. are living in a 20 foot travel trailer and we went from a four bedroom home to a 40 foot fifth wheel, which was a drastic downsize. And mm-hmm. now cut that in half. And so, and this is a temporary, but we really wanted to do something to make up for the lost time. And so we're like kind of on this like bucket list adventure, going to more um, remote places that we couldn't do with the big rig. So what we took the, the Jeep Gladiator and the 20 foot travel trailer out to Colorado. And that was kind of our first like bucket list adventure. And that was where we realized that, wow, yes, na- navigating this elevation in you know, with the Jeep Gladiator, that's not a great tow vehicle by any means. Um, But it, you know, it's safe and legal, like we're all within the legal limits and everything, but doesn't have the power that most, you know, most vehicles have. So we were, um, it did great. It actually did better than we thought, but it wasn't, um, we had to drop it down a couple gears and just, you know, kind of go a little bit slower than, than we're used to. Um, But our, our next goal, and that was why we kind of did it this way, is we're going to get a motorhome next and tow the Gladiator. And so the Gladiator was what we wanted most of all. And um, this was just kind of a, a bucket list vehicle to, to take us places. And, oh, gosh, we have been to so many remote places that we could have never been on um, or been to with the big rig. So it's been definitely worth it. Yeah. What's uh, maybe one or two of those remote places that have really stood out to you? So, oh my gosh, one, we, I don't know if you've ever heard of the term boondocking. So, Mm -hmm. okay. So we, we never were able to boondock with our big rig. So boondocking is for anybody listening um, that doesn't know it's RVing without any hookups. And so you have to have certain, um, you know, equipment to be able to safely do it. And so we planned on boondocking for a week outside of the Great Sand Dunes National Park. Um, and we found the most gorgeous place at the bottom of a mountain and just, it was so awesome. And you have to have, you know, you have to be self-contained. You have to have water on board. So we have, you know, um, a fresh, you know, fresh water tank and, and, um, you know, you have to know how to like handle your electricity and your trash, like all of those things. So we really, you know, learned a lot, but that was probably the best, you know, situation for us and the best learning experience that we had. We were, you know, we always wanted to, to boondock and be out in the middle of nowhere with, you know, kind of off the grid. Right. And it was very exciting. Um, it was just the most beautiful sunsets every night. Um, There was always a kind of an afternoon storm, which would bring the most beautiful rainbows. So we had just the the beauty all around in the mountain and, you know, right above us. It was just really awesome. So that was one that was, again, right outside of the Great Sand Dunes National Park. And then we, another thing we'd like to do is we like to leave the RV and actually we have a truck tent for our gladiator. 
So okay. we like to even, you know, be even more remote where even mm-hmm. we can't take the RV. And we um, tent camped at the top of a mountain. Um, it's called Bolin Pass, which is uh, right outside of Rico, Colorado. And we could never have gotten there if we didn't have our Jeep. So it was really cool to be, you know, on the top of this mountain. We camped right next to a waterfall overlooking the tall aspens with mountain views all around us. It was just, so we were at the top of one mountain, but there was taller mountains around. It was just amazing. And we hit it on a night where the stars were like nothing I've ever seen. It was like layers and layers and layers. It was so bright. And I didn't have any like camera equipment to, to, to video or to capture it, but I will have that. We'll have that in our minds forever. It was just amazing. We just sat in our chairs and just looked up for hours. It was like we had a fire. It was just, it was perfect. It was one of our favorite nights of our lives. Wow. That sounds amazing. I, I just got back from, uh, from Glacier National Park last weekend. Oh, I saw that. Bit. I cannot <laughs> wait to go to, we both are like, we cannot wait to go to Glacier. How was it? Was it awesome? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I, I definitely uh-huh. want to go back and explore more. Um, but I, I did the same thing. I just, I camped out uh, under the stars and I mean, it was oh. during the Perseid meteor shower. Oh, it's- no way looking up and there's the milky way is, is so clear and there's stars everywhere and then just shooting stars all, you know all the time is oh, that is magical oh what a great experience yeah yeah and i think you know being able to you know go in your rv and, and go into those remote places you get to experience things like that that you know you're, you're not going to see it in a big city Right. And that's what we realized that, you know, my husband, when he was growing up, he um, did a lot of like mm-hmm. church, um, like mission, like retreats, like tr- uh, youth, mm-hmm. youth camp retreats. And so he was on one where he saw stars like that. I can't remember where they all went, but he had. What's up, everyone? Kyle here. I am super excited to share that my audiobook version of Travel Tips is up now. You can find it on Audible, Libro.fm, and anywhere else that you get your podcast. Go check it out um, and, and buy a copy. It also has 30 minutes, uh, a little over 30 minutes of bonus commentary uh, that isn't in the actual book. So that's a little added bonus. Um, but go check it out. Uh, I appreciate all the support and I hope you guys enjoy the episode talked about that his whole life ever since we you know met and got married and he had always wanted me to see stars like that and I could never imagine it until that night he was so excited I finally got to see him like that and and now he realized wow when you get away from all these city lights like the beauty that is right above us that's there all the time we just can't see it and uh, oh I'm so glad you had that experience too that that is something that I wish everybody gets to see in their lifetime yeah, yeah, I think it makes you feel uh, well. Just being in nature in general, I totally. think you feel a lot more connected to the earth and just totally of everything. <laughs> That's exactly it. We love to be outdoors, and hiking is our favorite thing to do. And and just being outside, I we both we just absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, I'm so you know I just can't get enough of it. I wish that we could do it every day. Like we're, you know, where else can we hike? Where else can we go? You know, I can mm-hmm. definitely, um, to do it every day. I don't think it would ever get boring. Um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. So glad you had that experience too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, you know, you talking about your, all the different, uh, you know, trucks and, and different uh, campers and stuff that you had. It yeah. sounds like a lot of logistics to make, make these different trips work. Um, can you explain like some of the, like, is there, you know, specific spots that you got to park the RV in order to, you know, take the truck somewhere else and, you know, things like that. Yeah, that's a great question. So what we do is we kind of look for um, an RV park. So there's, there's a lot of different places that you can um, park your RV and find that you can, that you can stay. So one of the, the things that we do, we have apps that will look for RV parks or state parks or campgrounds, but there's also, um, we love Harvest Hosts and Boondockers Welcome, which is an app that is so cool. So Harvest Hosts is a, um, a group of small business owners that allow you to stay on their property 
for, you know, at least one night up to even three to five nights and um, for free. And so you'd pay a, you know, a membership to join Harvest Host. And then they kind of want you to, you know, just, you know, go and, and maybe spend a little bit of money at their, you know, the, the small business, which is, you know, definitely yeah. what we love to do anyway, is just to, to support the small business. And then um, Boondockers Welcome are just people. They're just like normal people that have either a farm or maybe even just some property or just even like a spot outside their house that they welcome RVers to stay for free and they want nothing like that. You don't have to give them any money. And they just, it's so cool. A lot of the time there is no hookups, but sometimes like we stayed in, in Colorado Springs um, at somebody's house. They had a, they pulled a, um, or they poured like a extra driveway for somebody, you know, to put their RV on. And they had, they offered us electric and water for five days and they just wanted five dollars a day to pay for the electric and water and that was like that was so awesome so we try to find places like that that are safe that we we feel good about leaving everything and then we can go ahead and you know tent camp somewhere we don't have to worry about it um so we've always left the rv somewhere where you know we felt safe um that you know, either with, with somebody in the boondocker welcome community or harvest hosts or, um, or, um, an RV park, but yeah, we, there is some planning. There definitely is. We, we want to always, you know, make sure of safety and make sure that, you know, when we do leave everything, it's all locked up and we have a camera, you know, like a ring camera type thing that we, that we leave and, um, you know, kind of with an app can check in and, so, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's, um, you know, for the most part, every, everywhere we go is, is really safe. There's like RV, the RV community, everybody looks out for each other. It's really awesome. It really is. They're like the nicest group of people that, you know, we didn't know if it would be like when you see on TV, like, you know, everybody's in your business, like what's for dinner, you know, <laughs> like yeah. if you're grilling out, it's not like that at all. Everybody is just, you know, there to enjoy just, you know, being, you know, being outside and, you know, they're, everybody kind of keeps to themselves, but they're there if you need them. If, you know, Mm -hmm. there's, we've had so many helpful people, like if something happened and, you know, we needed some help, like, you know, four different people would be there in a, you know, in a second. It's really nice. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Who uh, is there? uh, I mean, I'm sure you meet people from all over the U S and probably other countries as well that are out there doing that. We definitely, we have so many um, connections now with some wonderful friends that we've met along the way. Um, I'm a huge extrovert, so I'm all in it with walking <laughs> my dog. I am always talking to people and I like to hear people's stories. You know, that's why I love your podcast to hear other people's stories too. It's, it's just so interesting to hear, you know, where people are coming from and what they're doing there and, and all that. And, and so um, and then with social media, it's so great that we can, you know, stay connected after we travel and people get to see our travels. We get to see theirs. It's really, um, I love that part about social media and, and meeting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it, you know, probably gives you, uh, ideas of places to go and, you know, tips and tricks for navigating some, some of those places you might be traveling to that other people have experienced. Definitely. Definitely. Like I said, I would have even have known about Tell You Ride Colorado until I saw somebody else's Instagram and it was like, wow, that looks amazing. And so it really has, and I've actually had so many people tell me, you know, that they went to places because they saw my pictures and, oh, I think that that is like the best feeling in the world. You know, I just had uh, somebody tell me that they did a few things um, that we did like in, when we were in the San Francisco area and we did like we would go because, like I said, we were staying in San Jose. So we would dr- drive every weekend, like two to three hours and go somewhere different. So we saw like the, you know, the Redwoods and mm-hmm. um, Big Sur and, you know, 17 mile, 17 mile drive, you know, different things. Like every every weekend we would do things and, and I would just post about it at the beginning. I wasn't even I just it was almost like just a diary to keep track of my my um, travels and I had somebody see that. And just recently last year, they did the same thing that we did b- because they saw that. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. Uh, definitely uh, rewarding. It, it sounds like, 
Um, ha- have there been any, uh, uh, like, I guess, issues that have come up along your travels, like a blown tire or, you know, something just goes wrong during the trip? Absolutely. That is the one thing with RV life is you just be ready because it's not when it's, or it's not if, it's when. Um, and we knew it was going to happen. It's just a matter of time. Um, we've actually had two big things. Um, one, the first one, we were always worried about a tire blowout because on, you know, if you, you know, we watched a lot of YouTube and, and followed our mirrors and, and there's so many dangerous things that can happen on, you know, when the tire blows out. And so I would always follow, like I said, um, we were driving separate. So I would follow and my husband would have, you know, the big rig and I, I would just, we'd have our walkie talkies and I would let him know if I saw anything, you know, like that was looking bad on the back. And I didn't see a thing. And we had just got off. um, Thankfully, we got off an interstate and, and we were at a red light and somebody, I could see somebody pulling up and yelling at him, like pull over. And and I'm like, what the heck? I didn't even notice anything. And one of the dually tires was completely shredded. Oh, geez. He never even felt it. And I never saw anything. And so thankfully it was a dually and we had the other wheel, or I think obviously it would have, you know, um, really pulled him over, but yeah, yeah, it was, and, and that just a real quick side story that ended up being such an amazing, like just to see how people are just, you know, we pulled over, we actually ended up riding like about a mile down. There was a, um, this was in a town in Ohio um, at about an, uh, maybe an hour where we were from and we were actually going to go stop and see some families who we were so close to, to going there and this happened, but we found, um, it was called Ohio Edison. So it's the utility company there and it was a huge parking lot. We, we looked up on, um, Google maps to find out where could we go to like get out of, you know, get off the road and, and figure this all out. And we saw from Google maps, a big, um, parking lot. So we pulled in there and we were having a really hard time getting the, like the lug nuts off. And it was, it was really almost scary. Cause we didn't know what we're going to have happen. Like, how do they tow it? Cause you know, the truck is hooked up. Like it was all these questions. We didn't really know the roadside assistant wasn't helping us. And, and anyway, the, the crew was coming back in at Ohio Edison and they were like, Hey, do you guys need help? And these four guys, and it was on a Friday, like quitting time these four guys like just took over and they were like, don't worry, we'll handle it. And they took everything off. They got like tools from the shop and, and they like changed the tire for us. So it was just so nice. It was like, wow, you know, we would, that, this could have been like a nightmare for us. And, and they were like, no big deal. And we're like, can we pay you? They're like, no way. You know, they were just so nice. And so it was really, it was awesome. Um, so that was our first one. We're like, okay, we have our first tire blown, you know, <laughs> incident under our belt. We feel like we're, we're okay. We survived it. And then we were actually coming up probably about a year later, we were driving on um, I-95 South heading from Ohio to Florida and we had our leaf spring snap on the fifth wheel. And so what that does is the leaf spring snapped and the whole RV basically um, dropped on uh, the side of our tires and it blew the tires out. So it, and it was because I-95 in South Carolina has the worst roads ever (laughs) and there was like huge potholes. And so he hit it, like he couldn't avoid it. It was actually, um, New Year's Day, and there was tons of traffic, and so he couldn't avoid it. There was just traffic all around, and so he hit it, and it just snapped everything. So we end up pulling over. Um, Smoke was coming out the back. I was like, something's wrong, you know, and so he gets out, and he's like, wow, we are in trouble. So thankfully, roadside assistance came, and they ended up uh, towing us to about a mile back um, was a truck stop with a um a repair shop there well of course nobody was there on new year's day but we were there and we were able to talk to them um the next day and they ordered us a new leaf spring and and unfortunately we're there a whole week in this truck stop parking lot um until it could come in and get fixed but we were safe and we were thankful that um you know that it all worked out and it was okay so yeah there's always going to be something and it's really it teaches you how to 
you know, not be, like I said at the beginning, I'm such a planner. And I realized starting this RV life, um, I plan in pencil. <laughs> I don't make <laughs> yeah, anything yeah. permanent. And I, I really learned to be spontaneous. Like, okay, this, is, this isn't part of our plan, but okay, how are we going to deal with this now? And it's really had, you know, it's, I've grown so much in, you know, in this, this, these experiences, because I've always been really bad with change. Like, oh no, this is, this is not on my one-year plan or my five-year plan. And, and now I'm like, I don't know what tomorrow looks like, but we'll make it work. So yeah, um, yeah you kind of learn that, but it's, it's all, it's all good. It all works out. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's really important to keep in mind when traveling is that nothing's ever going to go exactly <laughs> according to plan. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I never knew that before. We never, we never were travelers. We really didn't hardly ever go anywhere. Our, our vacations were to go to the other state. When we lived in Ohio, we'd come to Florida to see family. And when we moved to Florida, we go to Ohio to see family. And that was it. Like we really never went anywhere until this. And so uh, we had no idea what what was in store for us. But like I said, it's been the best decision we've ever made. Yeah. Wow. Um, do you, uh, I guess what's, what's some, uh, some trips coming up that are on your bucket list or something that you really want to, to go see in your RV? So next, the, the next thing that we want to do is we want to spend at least six weeks in Utah and maybe even two months and do, um, you know, the, the five national parks and there's so many amazing trails that we want to go in our jeep um, and do some overlanding and the truck 10 and all that we we are so excited about that so we've not we've been to utah um just a little bit like to see I, we have a cousin in utah so we stayed a few days um and we knew it was beautiful but we've never been to the national parks there and so that is the next thing and then um, from there, we want to do like Glacier and um, you know, uh, Yellowstone, mm -hmm. um, Grand Tetons, you know, so oh, we have so many. We want to see all the national parks. That's that's really all um, on our bucket list. We want to see all 63 national parks. Um, but the the first thing will be Utah and then Glacier and and Yellowstone and mm -hmm. yeah, all that. So have you been to Yellowstone? No, I, I haven't, which is, is crazy because I've driven, you know, fairly close to it many times over my life. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, just never worked for whatever reason. But I've been to uh, been to many other national parks. Um, so awesome. What's your favorite? <laughs> um, oh, man, they're all so different. It's, it's hard to. I know. Hard to say. I, I, uh, I don't know. Glacier is definitely up there now uh, for sure. Um, Grand Canyon is unreal. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mount Rainier is basically my backyard. Uh, oh, that's so, on our list. I can't wait to see that. You're so lucky to have that in your backyard. Yeah. It, it, kind of the same thing going back to, you know, you know, living so close to something that you kind of forget to appreciate it. Right. Uh, I really, I mean, I, I live, uh, you know, I could enter the east side of the park in 45 minutes from my house. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I really, I went as a, as a very young kid and then I had never been as since then. Um, so oh it's been my gosh. 20 plus years that I've, you know, I, I see it all the time driving by, but, uh, had never gone in in, in such a long time. And it's just like, I finally a couple years ago, I was like, you know what? I need to do that. Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> that is so amazing. And so when you went, did it, was it like better than you remembered? Oh yeah, for sure. It was, it was amazing. Um, definitely like enjoyed uh, spending my time there. I did some, some of the hikes there and just, you know, really fell in love with it again. Oh, that's so good. I'm so glad you did that. Cause that, isn't it funny how we just take for granted what's in our backyard. We get used mm -hmm. to it and we don't even think about it anymore. That's awesome. Yeah. That every time I see Mount Rainier, Rainier I'm like, Oh my gosh, I, we got to get there. That the pictures are just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful, but yeah, I would I'd probably have to say, uh, I'd probably put Glacier in the top three. I would put Acadia up there as well. Oh, that's another um, one we're hoping to to get to this um, before 
before fall, but I don't think we're going to be able to make it maybe next year. But yeah, that's awesome. So you've been there too. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend Acadia, especially kind of this, the fall time. Yeah. Um, that's what we're hoping, but I don't know if it'll work out this year, but yeah, I have a feeling um, Glacier is going to be our new favorite. Our current favorite is Yosemite. Have you been there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I only got a very short time there, but yeah. Yosemite okay. I had heard though, if you, if we like Yosemite Glacier is going to be our new favorite. So I'm I, yeah, thinking. I can see that for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh -huh. that's what we're looking forward to is to see like if we already have so much beauty that is our favorite, to see more beauty that's gonna be even our new favorite. That's just like so exciting to us. Like there's so mm -hmm. much beauty out there. Yeah, yeah, it, it's incredible. I mean, you you go to one place and you're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible, and then you know, hundred miles up the road, there's something else that's amazing. I know. It never ends. That's exactly when we first started. I was posting just to my friends on Facebook, and every single place, like, this is our favorite. And then the next thing was, this is our favorite. Like, you keep saying that. I'm like, I know. It's so exciting. It's every new place is our favorite. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm curious. Do you guys have plans to ever? Uh, like trek through Canada in the RV? Oh, yes. We totally want to do Banff. Like, oh, that's like, so uh, that's, I think probably number one on our, on our bucket list. But yeah, we definitely want to see a lot of Canada too. There's so much beauty there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's not too far of a trek from, uh, from Glacier. Yeah. That's what I heard. That's what everybody says. If you're going to go to Glacier, you guys might as well just keep going. So that's what we need to definitely make plans for that. Uh, what's, uh, what's some other, uh, you know, bucket list items that you have? You know, I, it's, I think a lot of the things are, you know, Jeep trails for us right now. Like we do a lot of like, you know, watching the, you know, YouTube and seeing, um, in fact, when we were in ten, the 10 weeks in Colorado, I'm so sorry, somebody's cutting the grass in our RV park. Can you hear it? <laughs> Is it too bad? No. So hopefully, <laughs> okay. Hopefully it's not too bad. Um, the, when we, um, were the, in 10 weeks in Colorado, you know, we did some really great Jeep trails Then we came home and we're watching more things on YouTube. We realized there were so many more, like, I mean, dozens and dozens more that we didn't even know we were right there and the beauty is amazing so we're always looking now for you know jeep trails because it does seem like when you can go off road you are able to see just like when you hike you know you're able to see so many places that you could never see from the road and so we're constantly looking for those like whether we can hike there or take the jeep we want to get to like remote places that most people can't see unless they hike or, you know, take an off-road vehicle. So yeah, that's what we're, we're looking forward to is, you know, to complete our bucket list of all the national parks and as many Jeep trails as we possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to following along on your adventure for sure. Oh, uh, Thanks Kyle. <laughs> um, uh, really quick. Uh, one more like logistical thing. Um, yeah. do you guys keep, uh, to keep some sort of uh, mailbox or like, you know, address uh, in Florida or do you just. Yes. Great laugh? question. That is a great question. And honestly, that's probably the number one question we get asked about our being. So that's so great that you thought of it too. Um, yeah. So we use my dad's address um, for our mail and we actually, so when you RV, we, um, you can actually buy an address and use it as your domicile address and you can have that on your um your driver's license and your insurance and all that stuff you could buy an address and huh. what what that does it's like you could even just google like mail forwarding or rv mail and there's a, a bunch of them it used to be like just one or two now there's a bunch of people getting into it and so we were originally just we bought an address and we had that on our license and our voter registration all of that and um it's it gets expensive and what they do is they it's an app and they'll open your not open your mail but they'll show you a picture of your mail and then you can say to open it and then send a picture and scan you know whatever is inside or just forward it to you and so they would do that all the time but then that got expensive and there was a lot of like junk mail that we were paying 
for me. And so um, my dad lives in Daytona. And so he said, you know, why don't you just use our address and all. So then now he does the same thing. He just takes pictures of our mail and he kind of can tell if it's junk mail, he just throws it away. Or if it's something he thinks that we need to see, then um, he'll take a picture of it. And then we'll say, dad, you know, open it and, you know, do something with it or whatever. Or like once a month, he'll just package it up and, and um, send it to us wherever we are. Huh. That's, that's really nice to have that kind of home base. Oh, so nice. <laughs> and then um, usually wherever we are too, if we want like Amazon, we are constantly ordering from Amazon. <laughs> um, we either, if we're an RV park, um, you know, obviously we could just get it at the office. But when we were in Colorado and we're not staying in RV parks, there's the Amazon drop boxes, which is really oh. cool. You just find out where they are and just go get your package there. So yeah. Okay. Or those That's lockers, good. I guess they're called Amazon lockers, I guess is mm -hmm. the term for it. But yeah, that really works out good too for us. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's, it's amazing all the, all the ways you can find to just to make it all work. I mean, yes, we, that is, that is definitely our motto. We will make it work. <laughs> <laughs> we will figure this out. Yeah. Love it. Um, really, really quick. Uh, I, I know you're the, the author of Niche to Freedom. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So thanks for asking. So what happened during COVID is when we were stationary um, and we couldn't find any contracts, I mean, all the contracts were on hold. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, we were just like the, the fire of our travel bug was just lit. And we were like, we cannot imagine stopping. So we were, um, I was pretty desperate to find us a plan B. And so I was really looking into um, how to make money online. And so I just dove into um, actually a couple years before that, I was already taking some marketing classes. Um, and so then I dove into tech classes and I was just really learning marketing and tech and how to make money online, how to have your own online business. And so I, I did, like I figured it out. I had all these pieces of the puzzle I was trying to solve and and so I finally solved it. And one of my dreams was to start my own digital marketing company. And I, I launched that um, last month. And one of my first things I wanted to do was because it took me about five years to figure out all of these things that mm -hmm. it seems like this big secret of how to make money online. Um, I wanted to give everybody the roadmap of how to do it. And like there's a, there was 11 income streams and marketing and tech tips. And I decided to give it away for free with, you know, just no strings attached. And I did a, um, a webinar. I did three live webinars so people could have a, a different, like a choice of time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had a really great turnout and I had really great feedback. But one of the biggest things was people said, but I don't know my niche. And when I did my webinar, I really taught people the first thing you need to start with is what is your niche? Like, what do you want to, you know, what, what's your thing that you want to start this business of, you know, you don't want to spend all this money and then find out you hate it or it's not a moneymaker or whatever. So yeah. a lot of people have, um, you know, difficulty figuring that out. And so I thought, you know what, that's my next thing that I'm going to, I'm going to create this guide to show you how to, how to find your niche. And once you find your niche, then it, it gives you the freedom to have your own online business and and make money from there. So yeah, I'm excited about it. I always wanted to write a book. It was never that, that topic was not, um, you know, on my mind. I actually really want to write a, um, an RV book for a girl's guide to RVing. Um, I really, that's like in the works, but um, still long ways to go. But so this was just a ebook comprehensive guide to yeah, discovering your niche and, and building an online business you love. So <laughs> that's so cool that's so cool and, and congrats on starting your business too that's amazing yeah. thank you thank you so yeah so my husband still does the travel therapy and now we don't really need to worry about so much two contracts um it's easier to find one contract and um mm. and then you know hopefully um you know sometimes he doesn't have to to work all the time and we can have these fun you know bucket list adventures too yeah yeah wow sounds like uh you know you guys have really uh, you know, lived out some of your dreams and uh, maybe had some new dreams uh, start because of uh, all of your experiences. And Absolutely. I don't know, really, yeah, really inspiring to to hear your story and, and that you guys just you took some risks and you went for it and it's it's worked out really well for you. So that's that's really cool to see. 
Thank you so much, Kyle. Yes, um, it is honestly definitely risky. And some people thought we were brave. Some people thought we were crazy. We definitely realized we're a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, but it has really paid off and really changed our lives. We've grown. We were always close as a couple. But when when all you have is to rely on each other, you really you really learn so much about each other. And um, mm. it's just, yeah, it has been life changing for us. And, and I don't even say that lightly. It's, it's really changed our lives with how we, how we feel about life, how we feel about the world, how we feel about each other, you know, how we see beauty in front of us when we didn't even know it was there. It has really, really been so awesome for us and yeah, highly recommend it. Yeah. Amazing. Well, um, Jamie, any other, uh, quick, tips, tricks, or anything else that you want to share? Um, I would just, yeah, encourage everyone to, you know, just find the beauty wherever they are. And even if they can't RV and, and can't, you know, maybe go on these bucket list adventures, there is an adventure, you know, in your neighborhood, in your town that you probably didn't even know. And so I would just encourage everyone to, you know, to just get out there and, and find the fun in your day, whether it's a picnic in your backyard with your kids or, you know, going for a walk in, in the park that maybe you drove by a bunch of times, just discover the beauty around you and, and uh, it really will change your life. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, um, Jamie, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to, to chat today. Um, really quick, can you plug uh, like your Instagram website, that sort of stuff? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So we are everywhere at Rome in your home. And um, we are we have a YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Um, I even have a Twitter, but I never use it. But yeah, everywhere. Uh, website. Yeah. Rome in your home. R-O-A-M in your home dot com. Kyle, this has been awesome. You're awesome. I wish you the best with your thank podcast you. and everything and your travels. And uh, thank you so much for having me. I've been honored to be here. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's been a great conversation. Uh, definitely inspires me to to want to take a you know road trip in an RV and just kind of experience that life for a little bit. Awesome. Um, maybe I'll sell I, everything that I have too. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you, there is no better feeling than to be on vacation, but to be able to sleep in your own bed too. That is so cool. What a combination. Yeah, that's <laughs> I like that. That's good. Uh, good way to look at it, but, but. Um, yeah, thanks again. Really appreciate it. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you somewhere around the world soon. Sounds great, Kyle. Wish you the best. Thank you. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. Hey, everybody. Kyle here. If you enjoyed today's show and want more, you can always check out every episode on Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, and now Amazon Music as well. Just search for Our Travel Experiences on any of those platforms and it will pop up. You can also find everything all in one place on my website, OurTravelExp.com. And if you want to see my travel pictures as well as travel pictures from guests on the show, you can check them out on Instagram. The page is called Our Travel Experiences Podcast. And if you want to share your own pictures on the Instagram page or be a guest on the podcast, you can message me via that Instagram page or email me at our travel experiences at outlook.com. I would love to see your pictures and hear about your travel experiences. So please send them my way. And if that isn't enough for you, make sure to check out my weekly YouTube show from around the world Fridays. Every Friday, I'm taking five to 10 minutes to answer questions from listeners, share some souvenirs that I bought over the years, um, share my postcards over the years that I've accumulated or share videos and pictures from one particular city or country that I visited, and so much more. So check it out, guys. You won't be disappointed, and uh, make sure you go subscribe to that as well. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you somewhere around the world soon. Thank you to all the listeners and subscribers of this podcast. Um, it's amazing that I uh, get the opportunity to do this and you know talk to all of these amazing people around the world and hear their stories and share it with you um it's been a been a dream doing this it's a lot of fun and and i'm excited to keep uh moving forward with it um as always the uh subscriptions uh three dollars of the monthly subscription goes towards providing uh school supplies to uh kids in need around the world and um, i'll be providing more updates on those uh on uh, progress with that 
as uh, as time moves along. But again, hope you enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you next week for another inspiring story and great episode. Have a great week. See you next time.